This video shows how to analyze the Warren truss using LinPro. The first step is to define the nodes. Now, a Warren truss is made up of a number of equilateral triangles. So if we click here and define the nodes, we'll define the nodes at two meter intervals. The grid lines are two, are two meters using the units, the default units of kilonewton meters. That's the bottom row of, of nodes. We now define the top row, midway between the two. By the way, if you accidentally create a node there that you don't want, if you click on it again and just hit delete, it'll go. Now, we need to change the, we need to move these down a bit because an equilateral triangle, if this, if this is two meters, this is two meters, and this is two meters, then the vertical will be root three, which is 1.732. So we go in here to coordinates of joints and supports and change the upper. The lower are at seven meters up, y coordinate of seven, the higher, the upper row are at y coordinate of nine. Position in the grid doesn't really matter, it can be anywhere within the grid, but it's the relative co coordinates that matter. So we're going to change this to 8.732, which is 7 plus the square root of 3. 732, And they've moved down off the grid. We now to define it, create members by clicking on this icon. Member types are all going to be constant. The standard, the default member in LimPro is um, has a, an area of one by ten to the minus two square meters, which is a hundred millimeter square section. So that's reasonable. It's quite, it will be quite a heavy steel section, but it, it'll, it doesn't matter in a statically determined structure. It doesn't affect the results other than the magnitude of the deflection. So we'll define the top chord and right click there and go back to pointer to stop defining members. We need to define supports. Right click on that then right click and make it a pinned support. Click and right click and make this a vertical support which is a roller support as the icon shows. Now let's add some loads. So if we control and click for the first node and then control and click the other nodes that we want to apply, assuming we want to apply the same load to all of them, add load. In the global y direction, we want a load of 10 kilonewtons. So we apply that and have that. Now at the moment, this is not a pin jointed truss. We haven't released any moment. At these, at these nodes, so it is in fact a continuous frame in the shape of a truss. <coughs> we can run the analysis and we'll actually see that it doesn't make too much difference. Whether, but, but of course we should, to do an idealized pin jointed truss, we should release the moments and we will do that. But first let's run the, the, the analysis. There's the deflected shape. Let's look at the moments. Okay, it's a little bit uh, cluttered, but the moments are, the maximum moments are less than one kilonewton meter, which is not particularly high. Shear similarly is about one, less than one kilonewton, again, not particularly high. The axial forces, red indicates tension all along the bottom, white indicates compression all, the, all along the top, and the alternating compression, tension, compression, tension, compression in the, the diagonal members. Now let's look at the magnitude here, 36, nearly 37 kilonewton meters there, nearly 34. So 37 and 34. Now we will release the, the, the joints and rerun it and see how that compares. So go back to the draw structure option. Now releasing moments in this, if, if it's a large truss, can be a bit tedious in LimPro. It's not you know, uh, simple, no simple way to do it, but if you're, you can do it member by member by clicking on a member like this, right clicking, and then moment release, a joint zero, a joint one. Okay, but I want, to, okay, let's do that for this one, joint zero, I have to do it again for joint one. Now, that shows now that this is a pin joint, this is pinned, uh, the last one, there's no need to release member 14 there because that has already been now defined as a pin joint. This joint is not defined as a pin joint, but you, you need to release the moments on every member coming into the joint except for one. If you release the moments on all four members, the joint itself becomes unstable, it's not attached to any member, and the analysis will give you an error. So let's try and do this in a 
I'm going to select a quicker way by looking at the coordinates of the joints and supports. <clears throat> All right, looking at the members, member properties. And let's think about this. If we pick members 1, 2, 3, 4, and the top ones, 15, 16, 17, and 18, and release the moments at both ends of those numbers. So 1, 2, 3, 4. We've already done number 0. So we don't want to do that again. And 15, 16, 17, and 18. So we've selected those, and we can go into end releases. Now, because we've selected more than one, it says joint I and joint J. So I'm going to release the bending moment at both ends. Click OK on that. Now, that's looking reasonably OK. Uh, there's no, no evident errors. <coughs> Now, if we take number 13, every second member, I think, in this will do it. Every 13, but 11, 9, 7, and 5, and release the moments at each end. So we clear this selection here and go back up and start with uh, 5, 7. There's going to be a slight problem with member 5, but we'll, we'll do it first and then fix the problem. 5, 7, 9, 11, and 13 and release moments at both ends of those. Click OK. Now, it's looking good. All these joints have gone, become pin joints, shown by the, the empty circle. There's a problem with joint 5. Every, all the, both members are, have releases on them, and the support itself is, is a pin. So we need to undo that from member 5. So if we right-click on that and undo the, the release at joint 5, that is now OK. So that's what you need before you run this. You need to see those circles at each. If I ex zoom in there, you need to see these empty circles at each of the joints. And that confirms that you have released them all. If you want to pick up that, that one, say, and if I undo one of those, you see this kind of diagramming uh, at, at that. So let's do that. And that goes back to normal. OK, so let's zoom extends like that. And we're ready to run the analysis. It's now a pin joint to truss. <coughs> if we look at the moments, they're all zero, which is what you'd expect. The shear force is zero. The axial forces, is there 37 and 34. So they're just slightly over 37 now. And over 30, slightly greater than 34. So the bending, the, the axial force diagram is very similar, even though uh, very similar to the case where the moments were not released. Which is the shape that's due to both the shape of the truss and the fact that the loads are applied at the nodes. So the nodes get tend to get transmitted down through the members as axial forces. The maximum tension in this central cord here, the maximum compression in these two, the structure is symmetrical alternating compression, tension, compression, tension, decreasing or declining as you go to the center. So the, the equivalent of the shear force, which is most maximum of the supports, is being carried by these, to a greater extent, by the diagonals at the supports. We can look at the reactions. It doesn't actually show any figures on this, any, uh, but we can always look at the tabulated results and look at displacements, and we get that x and y and uh, phi, the rotation at all of the joints. And there are 10 joints in it. So <clears throat> all of the, this is a single load case called case one by default. Uh, it's the standard name. In uh, a separate video, I show how to define multiple low cases and combinations of those low cases using different uh, factors.